Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless your name, we hallow your majesty. We honor you for who you are. We thank you for the gift of motherhood. We appreciate you for our mothers. We worship you for the role they play in our lives. We thank you for giving us to them as children and also to them as husbands. We worship you because without this woman, we wouldn't have come to the world. And so today we are here to worship you, the Almighty God, and to celebrate our mothers. Father, it is time for you to speak to us, address our hearts. We pray you, minister, to us in the language we can understand. And Lord, bless us with your word this day, that as we go home, O oh God, we meditate upon your word, and our homes, our marriages, our lives will be better through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please sit. I must use this opportunity to thank our father, the primate, and our mother, Mama Nigeria, for giving me the privilege to stand here to preach at this modern Sunday. This occasion is very, very important, and we look forward to it every year that will be part of modern Sunday celebration. It's unlike me, I tried to speak with my mom this morning, but her line didn't go through. But during modern Sunday, I call her first thing, and she also, I'm sure she, was, she has been trying to reach me without uh, uh, to no avail. So we want to send a thank God for the gift of our mothers. Let me start first and foremost by congratulating the first mama in Nigeria, mama number one, mama Nigeria. We congratulate you on this very, very, very uh, auspicious occasion of the modern Sunday. Incidentally, Mama happens to be the mother of everyone in Church of Nigeria. And so we should, you, your clap is not good enough. This is a real a privilege. Not too many people have this opportunity, this privilege. And so this is a thing that we should glorify God for. And uh, we thank God for our father, the primate, the husband of our mother. So he is the father of everybody in the Church of Nigeria. I must confess this is the first time I'm standing to preach on a modern Sunday. Most of the time women preach. But it is not cast on stone that women must preach. Uh, it's a privilege that I never expected. And today I will not take this privilege for granted. And that is why it appears, I am saying it again and again, giving thanks to the primate, our father, and our mother, Mama Nigeria. The theme of this modern Sunday is Ruth, the virtuous daughter-in-law. As a matter of fact, this is the portion given as the first the reading for today, the Old Testament reading. But the, the, to, the explanation to this will be for another time. When it comes to discussion on mother-in-law or mother's-in-law by daughter's-in-law, it has always been of bitter discussion and caricature. When you talk about 
mother-in-law to a daughter-in-law, it has always been a thing of cat and dog relationship. And this is the experience we have, more or less, not just in Africa, all over the world. But it looks as if the African factor has outweighed what we see out there. As mothers are important that we are celebrating them today, it is good to know that mothers sometimes can be very, very problematic. Sometimes daughters, in-laws can be very, very problematic. So it's looking at it from both ways. Some mothers have made their sons vegetables that they can squeeze as they want and telemanage their homes. Some of us are sitting in this congregation this morning and we are listening and looking at me. Some daughters, in-laws have become so terrible that their mother, in-laws don't amount to anything before them. They so rubbish their mother's in-laws because either because of their social status and they feel they are poor. They feel they don't know anything. And so trouble all the way, yet it is this man that gave birth to the husband that you are calling darling. I would like us to look at the text that is before us, Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1, and I will read a very lengthy uh, number of, I mean, I will take very many number of verses because it wasn't read in the Old Testament. In the days when judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in a country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Elimelech Naomi's husband died and she was left with her two sons. They married Moab women, one named Op Opa and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Gilead also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughters in law prepared to return to return home from there. With her two sons in law, she left the place where with her two daughters in law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters in law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's, for your, to your mother's home. My, may the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. 
Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go, we will, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have another, any more sons who could become your husband? Return home, my daughters. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more, it is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. Verse 14. And this they wept again. Then Orpa kissed him. Her mother-in-law, goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look, Naomi said, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth, re Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there, I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. The word of God. The story of Ruth, the daughter-in-law of Naomi, is a very profound one. Very rare experience. I will just tell the story very briefly. let us know that this con contrasts sharply with our experience in the world today. Probably Elimelech wasn't patient enough to, to endure the hardship in the land of Judah, particularly in Bethlehem, Ephrathah, and decided to, to leave the place and go to the land of their enemy to look for greener pastures. We are told that she, he left with her wife, with his wife, and two sons to the land of Moab. Maybe I should tell you a little about the Moabites. They were so despised a people by the children of Israel. Because, number one, the history of Moab was a very dirty one. Dirty in the sense that Moab, the ancestor of the Moabites, happens to be the son that the daughter, the biological daughter of Lot, gave birth to for his for her father. Something that we consider to be incest today, isn't it? Lord put her, his two daughters to familyhood. He impregnated them even without knowing because he was drunk. He was made to be drunk and he agreed to be drunk. The first daughter gave birth to Moab, or a son, and named him Moab. And that became the ancestor, the ancestor of the Moabites. So Israelites 
don't look at them as any anything. Number two, if you look at the book of Genesis very closely, when Israelites sinned, God delivered them to the hands of Moabites. So he delivered them into the hands of, the, of, of Moabites in such a way that they dealt with Israel for 18 good years. They dealt with Israel for 18 good years before they cried to God and God answered them. And that was because Israel sinned. You will see that account in Judges chapter 3 verse 12. When Israel sinned, they were delivered into the hands of Eglon, the king of Moab for 18 years. So Israelites don't like these people. They don't even have want to have anything to do with the Moabites. Now, if you look at Second, I mean, um, Second Chronicles chapter twenty, the three nations that gathered together against Israel to fight Israel during King Jehoshaphat was this Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, which we call Mount Seir today. They gathered together to fight and humiliate Israel because they consider Israel as an enemy nation. This was the same nation that Elimelech found food and decided to go to to survive. May God not allow us to go into our enemy's hands to look for food. Amen. That is, it is a very terrible thing. I'm not even surprised that Elimelech did not survive his day in that place. And the most important thing in the things in their lives, their two sons also did not survive in Moab. It was a very traumatic situation. And Naomi was so much bitter thinking that God had forsaken her. Would God forsake his own? So it didn't take too long. God visited Bethlehem. In fact, the entire land of Judah. And they began to have good harvest. And the story spread around the whole place. And so this attracted Naomi to make up her mind to go back to her land of, of ancestry. Because things have become better there. And I wouldn't have time to begin to talk on every bit of this. But she left Moab as a bitter person. And when she got back, she expected people were celebrating her return. But she told her them not to celebrate her because she's coming as, a, as an empty person, as a bitter person. Rather, they should call her Mara. Mara means bitterness. Bitter. But the issue now is that of Ruth and Opa. Both of them were loved by their mother-in-law. Both of them loved their mother-in-law. So it's on both sides that they love themselves. And when Naomi was to go, they were preparing to go with her. What happened was that Naomi wanted them to stay back and settle down and get married to other men. But both of them insisted they were going to go with Naomi. After much persuasion, Naomi was able to prevail over Opa. What Opa did actually was not wrong. Because marriage is a thing of life, isn't it? Until death do you pass. 
So it's also customary for um, upper to go. It is allowed, it's permitted. But her love for her mother-in-law was so much that she didn't want to leave her. But her mother-in-law prevailed over her, but not with Ruth, to Ruth. Ruth refused to go back and made this profound statement on verse 16 and 17. That she would go with her wherever she went. And that was how Ruth followed her back to Bethlehem. Now, the story of Ruth tells us of a virtuous woman who never messed herself up. You know, sometimes it's a license for widows to, that are young, young widows to misbehave. Sleep from one bed to another. But Ruth wasn't such a person. She remained with her mother-in-law. The Bible tells us that Ruth did not just remain with her mother-in-law as a liability. Ruth was very much industrious in such a way that she provided for her needs and for the needs of her mother-in-law, even in the land of Judah, in Bethlehem. In chapter 2, in the course of providing for her mother-in-law, Ruth encountered a man called Boaz. Boaz happened to be a relation of the husband of Naomi, Elimelech. They are from the same lineage. Who, what is her name, Ruth gained favor with and Ruth was able to glean and glean and taking what is it means by gleaning is the harvesters have gone to harvest, but the leftovers, some of them, some of those grains will drop, isn't it? Those are the things that Ruth was looking for. From morning to night, that woman was there to provide to get something to place on the table for herself and her mother-in-law. How many women today that have married without children and still pay attention to their mother-in-law? But Ruth was doing it. Instead, what you will hear is that what connected us has gone. There is nothing binding us together again. That mother-in-law that gave birth to your late husband has become somebody to dispense with. People of God, both Naomi and Ruth were in tight bonds together. To tell you that these people love themselves, it's good you recognize what was said when Ruth was persuading them to go. She told them something that we need to think about. She said, May the Lord be with you and take care of you the way you took care and love your husband and also me. To tell you that these two young women loved their mother-in-law. Praise God. They loved their mother-in-law, particularly Ruth, who did not want to let go. People of God, it's important to know that Naomi, the mother-in-law of Ruth, did not take advantage of her at all. She was still thinking what she could offer Ruth as best gift. 
As Ruth was providing for her, she didn't see her as a means of providing her needs. One day in chapter 3, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, that is verse 1 of chapter 3, Should I not try to find a home for you where you will be well provided for? Try to look for a way of getting a good husband for Naomi. How many of our mothers today will be interested in the well-being of their daughters in law after the death of their children? But Naomi was so much interested because of the, of the symbiotic love that existed between Ruth and herself. People of God, it's good to love one's mother-in-law and it's good to love one's daughter-in-law. Because that person, your in-law, daughter-in-law becomes your daughter and your mother-in-law becomes your mother. And if you treat yourselves well, there will be peace, there will be joy, there will be harmony in the home. One of the ways by which a man, a woman can build her home is to be in good relationship, in good standing with her in-laws. What does Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1 says that a wise woman built her home, isn't it? That the foolish one pulls it down with her own hands. And that's what the, the, the part many of our women today, young women, are doing. I've been married for about 24 years now. My marriage is still young. But one of the best things that have happened to me is that I got married to my wife that I have today. And her parents have taken me as a, their own child, their own son. So much that when they take decisions in the family, they invite me to it. And my relationship, the relationship between my wife and my mom was cordial. It is still very, very cordial. And I will tell you the secret as we continue. So to cut the long story short, Ruth was able to give instruction to her, her, her I mean, uh, Naomi gave instruction to her daughter-in-law, and Ruth, her, her daughter-in-law, followed that instruction because Ruth, uh, Naomi was conversant with the, the customs and tradition of Judah. Ruth was a, a stranger. He told her what to do, and when Ruth did exactly that. The result was that she became married to Boaz. And to cut the long story short, God blessed them with a son called Obed, that become, they became the father of Jesse, the, mother, the father of uh, David, all leading to an ancestral line that brought Jesus Christ into the world. Hallelujah. So that, that despised Moabites, that woman called Ruth. God decided to factor her into the ancestral line of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a great miracle. Your background might be in ashes, but God can turn you into a glorious to today. So even though she did not live to see Jesus, her name goes down in history as the grandmother of Jesus Christ. Are you listening? The things you do today will pay off tomorrow at all. They can come haunting you tomorrow. If they don't haunt you, they, those things will haunt your children and your children's children. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. 
People of God, the good you do today will come as a pleasant presentation to your children and children's children tomorrow. Because some people will see them and say, if you are a son of this man or a son of this woman, then I will look after you. Because your father, your mother was a good man, a good woman. These things we do most of the time, we sow a seed. Remember, whatever a man sows, that he shall reap. If you sow good seed, you will reap good seed, that harvest. If you sow bad seed, bad harvest will ensue. So, people of God, we know that there could be difficult situations in marriage. Of course, that of Ruth wasn't that pleasant. But as at the time we, this story was written, the story we are, we are talking about, the today, if you look at it, of Ruth became better than her yesterday. May we not know a better yesterday. In the name of Jesus Christ. They love themselves. And as providence has it, everything that will make life comfortable for Ruth and Naomi came up. We call this type of, uh, she had to be married to a member of the family, but not the closest. The closest could not cope, and the second closest uh, relative decided to take Ruth, a very nice man, and looked after Ruth very well. We are not limiting our discussion to widowhood. We are talking about virtuous daughter-in-law. And I want you to assess yourself here sitting. Are you a virtuous woman? Do you still have a father-in-law or mother-in-law? Do you prove to be virtuous to them? Will they sing your praise? We didn't consider you to be a daughter-in-law that even if it means having her again and again in life, even in the world to come, they will want to have you as a daughter-in-law. Mother-in-law, will your, your daughter-in-law sing your praise? Will your daughter-in-law celebrate you? We saw a playlet, isn't it, a while ago? Where a mother-in-law left her place, she had something to do at home, but she left that one. And was preoccupying herself in the house of her son and his wife to assess what the son will eat at his age. The son does not know what to eat. Yes, I know Indomie may not be the best of food, but it's also food though. And the same woman will prefer, if you ask very well, that this man will continue to eat pounded yam until the man becomes pot bellied. And then hypertension will set him, high blood sugar will set him. She left her home. Her husband was in need of her. She didn't remain there. She didn't do play her own role, but she's going to play another person's role. Cause problem, kata kata. People of God, as mothers in law, what your duty is is to guide them, advise them, and pray for them. And when you pray for them, God will answer your prayers. Not to go and be causing confusion in their homes. I like the word that the person that summarized used. Allow your children, your sons, to marry their wives. Ah, which one be your own? So, people of God, 
The vagina has come. Should I close it? No, if you say yes, raise your hand. If it's, all right. So, Father, please, just for a short time while we... Today is a special day. Have good relationship with your mother and daughter-in-law. Ruth didn't even, Naomi didn't even remember that uh, this Ruth was a, is a, is a Moabite. A Moabite woman who does not, shouldn't have a relationship with Israel. They treated them, their, their relationship was, was guided or governed by love and the fear of God. Hello? What should govern the relationship of a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law? The fear of God and love. Are you listening? As I run off, I met a woman who was telling me, he said it's the duty of the woman to provide for the, the man to provide for the house. She's earning even bigger salary than her husband. We pastors, we sit in so. And I couldn't fathom, I couldn't even, it, it doesn't add up. The man was suffering. Do you know, the man has high blood pressure. And this woman was busy jollying about. It's you that is the husband you should provide for your children. Scoffy so, what to eat in the home. What this woman was doing with her money, nobody knows. Is she building a house somewhere? The woman of noble character invested in housing, he invested in businesses in order to make her family a stable family. Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. Read it. So, people of God, today, this leaves every one of us with a lesson to learn and to think about. Where will you place yourself? As a woman, the Bible tells us that a woman of noble character is the crown of her husband. In other words, what does a crown mean? A mark of honor. Do you, do you promote your husband or your family to your family name outside? Or people will look at you and say, God forbid that I would, somebody will have this one as a wife. Some women still go out of their marriage to, 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 to sleep with other men for promotion, for business, for contracts. Such are not women of noble character. They are women of disgusting character. May that not be your reputation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Theo just tells us of that uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 31. He said the woman, the children of this woman called her blessed and her husband celebrate her. Because of who she is. I happen to be one whom God has blessed with a virtuous woman. And today, I can glorify God for it. I don't think twice when I go out. May your case become like that of that woman that was praised by her husband and her children in the name of Jesus Christ. Love your father-in-law. Love your mother-in-law. You as a mother-in-law, love I mean, as a daughter-in-law, I mean, mother-in-law, love your daughter-in-law. Don't make, don't demonize her. Don't make devil out of her. Your love can beget a love. Are you listening? Loving her can give, make her reciprocate. 
Oh God, help us in the name of Jesus Christ. As I am rounding up now completely. She be the other time I said before I round up. I said I am rounding up what? Completely. These are some of the things that you should do. If I don't tell you, I have not helped you in this message. It is true that there are difficult illness, isn't it? These are practical recipes. Particularly those who are married to people of other culture. Learn the culture of your in-laws. Hello? Learn what they cook, how to cook. Some women don't know how to cook. That's a message for another day. <laughs> but learn how to cook to make the delicacies of your in-laws. If they come visiting, place before them what will impress them. They will love you. Are you listening? What did I say? They will love, love you. Learn their mannerisms. Know how to greet them. I saw a woman greeting her father-in-law standing erect. In Yoruba land, that one not fit happen. In my place, you have to kneel you with your knees. True or false for Yoruba people. Sometimes, if it's a man, you will be you you will go prostrate, isn't it? If a man comes to your house, it's your father-in-law, and the, 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 their culture is that the younger one should kneel and greet and you stand erect with that man, or she will think that you have disrespected her. Meanwhile, you don't know. Learn their cultures and traditions. Number two, take it to the Lord in prayer if you have a difficult in-law. Some are implacable, practically. There is nothing that you do that will, that will appease them. In such a case, who, what do you do? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Not one day prayer, a consistent prayer without season. One day, God will come, will touch the person. The Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you what? Rest. John chapter 16 verse 24 said, He that know you have not you have asked nothing in my name, ask and receive that your joy might be full. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 said, Cast your anxiety upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Let him hear what you are going through, if he will not hurt. Number three, learn to forgive and to forget. Some want to pay back when they become stable. You did it to me the other year, I will pay you back. No, learn to forgive and to forget, isn't it? Number, number four is the story of a man who said over his dead body with his, with his son, marry his daughter-in-law. They took it to the Lord in prayer, and after about four years, no, three years later, he asked his son, uh, what about marriage? And the son said he's no longer willing to marry, we'll stay for him. <laughs> now what was the reason why this, his son shouldn't marry the woman? The reason is simple that, uh, simply because the woman is not from their place. It's not from their tribe. And so over his dead body with his will, he so marry this person. The parents of the woman ask, ah, you are not with this, people are coming and you are turning that, the woman said, the woman says she know they marry another person. And after about four years, the man called his son and said, when will you want to marry? When will you want to marry? The son told him, he said, look, he has told you now that he's not ready to marry that he will stay for you. He said, no, tell me, who am I married? He said, the woman you brought, that is the one from another tribe. The son now asked him, how come now you are saying that I should marry the, the woman that you said I shouldn't marry? That over your dead, I will not marry you because if I marry her, you will die over your dead body. 
And he said, no, call her. I'm ready to revoke or re say everything, turn over, turn all that I have said before. And now the person now asks, why are you talking this way? He said, God woke me up at about 2 a.m. and talked about this. And I felt sorry for what I did. And the young man went and called the lady, and the man laid his hands on this woman and said, I've said over my dead body will my son marry you. But today, from this day forward, in my lifetime, I repeal what I said before, but in my lifetime, my son will marry you. He will be, you, 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 will be the mother of my grandchildren. They are married, happily married today. Before the man died, he became the closest friend of his daughter-in-law and vice versa. Till today, the mother-in-law is very closely knit with this woman and their family is successful. So people of God, let love and the fear of God rule your relationship with your in-law. Mother-in-law, love your daughter-in-law. Father-in-law, love your daughter-in-law. Daughters-in-laws, love your mothers and fathers-in-law. And there will be peace and harmony. Like the, we have root as a virtuous woman, a virtuous mother and daughter-in-law. May that be your testimony. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.